SharePoint Admin Center. In this section, you will learn about the parts of the SharePoint Admin Center and how to execute some of the main administrative tasks. We're going to look at managing the site collections, configuring sharing and device settings, and configuring the other settings. Managing the site collections. In the Office 365 Admin Center, go to the left navigation, go down to the A with the gear sticking out for the Admin Centers, and click on the SharePoint Admin Center, which will open in a new tab. The first thing you see when you get to the SharePoint Admin Center are the site collections. And also you have the options of the things that you can do for these site collections. For example, you see a listing of all the sites that are already created. This site is your main site. Anytime you create a new site, it will have the name Sites. These are separate site collections. If you create a new portal, it also will be a separate site collection. The same thing with the Search Center. This My represents the My Sites for each individual person. You can modify the settings to any of these site collections by clicking the checkbox next to it and then some options light up. You have the ability to delete. You can see the properties for that site collection with the URL so you can go straight to it. You can see the owners. The administrators is one thing that you want to make sure that you set. The company administrator is there by default. You might also see something like this provisioning user, which is the administrator that actually set up this domain account for this demo. You should have at least one primary site collection administrator, but you probably want to have a couple of other site collection administrators. Good rule of thumb is to have at least three. If you need to add a Microsoft support partner, then you can add them here. Your sharing settings are here. This is another thing you want to make sure that you set. Do you want to allow sharing outside of your company? Do you want to set any additional settings such as limiting by domain? You also are given some definitions of what these things mean and where these settings would be applied. Do you need to buy additional storage? If you go over the one terabyte of space, you can get additional storage up to 25 terabytes. It costs 20 cents a gig a month. Do you need to set the server quota? Sometimes when you're running things like applications, the server needs some space to be able to run some resources. If you need to set this resource quota for your server, then you would set it here. You can also send an email alert when you're getting near that quota. Do you need to upgrade your site? Now the upgrades need to happen at certain times. So if the upgrades need to happen at certain times. So for example, when these sites switched over from 2010 to 2013, you were given the ability to upgrade them. Since this site is already the current version, there's no need to upgrade. Once Office 365 goes to SharePoint 2016, you may need to exercise this setting. If you have project, you may want to add a new project web app. You can also restore things from the recycle bin. You can search by URL just in case you have a long list of site collections scrolling down the page. You can also see how much storage each is using and how much of the resource quota each is using. In total, you can see those totals here. Again, you get one terabyte of space. So you can go over and you can buy more gigs. Also, you get 6,400 resources, and it'll show you here how many are left.
You can create a new site collection under the new. There's the private site collection or the private site collection with a project web app if you have projects available in your Office 365 tenant.